What's going on? Charles Bodenston here in uh, New York City at the office, office roof. Here's the Times Square ball right there. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to be talking about, uh, I'm going to actually make two videos in a row because it just hits me. And, you know, I think it was Clark uh, that said something about in, in the comment section, like, how do you, like, where do you come up with the ideas? Like, I have no notes. I literally think of a topic and then I riff. And it was funny because there's there's a very popular YouTube channel out there called Vsauce. And the guy, I forgot his name, the guy that runs the channel, he says he thinks of the title and then the movie or, or the YouTube video. And it's a very deep, and I highly recommend it, Vsauce, V, and then Sauce. And it, he has like, I don't know, three, four, five, ten million, I don't know how many followers. But... Today we're gonna to be talking about who you actually talk to about your goals. So over the weekend, I was having a discussion and it's one of those things that, I've said it so many times about observing life and I was observing like what I was doing, where I was, I was in Atlantic City and there was some older people around and, and I'm like, do I wanna live that life? How did they get to that way? It, that, that's the thing is that you had to, you know, as Tony Robbins said and before him, Jim Rohn, his mentor, was that you had to reverse engineer and find out what they did right. And one of the things that they did right about goal setting is who they tell, who they surround themselves with. So obviously I already talked about who you surround yourself with, your mindset and things like that, but it's who you tell is as equally important. So Brian Tracy, I think it was Brian Tracy, originally said that you have to, once you say it, then it's real. Because if you think of a goal like, I'm gonna stop smoking, I'm gonna stop drinking, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna make more money, I'm gonna start a business, I'm gonna get all A's in my class, or whatever your goal is, if it's in your mind, he says it's not real, but once you say it, now you're held accountable, and even more enthusiastically to hold yourself accountable is that you post it on social media. And I've done that many times, I don't know if you follow me on social media, but if you go on my Instagram and you look through a couple of my Instagram posts, that's I literally will say, I want to do something, say with the business, or I want to bike across the country, and I'll say it, and now I'm held accountable to doing it. Whether I have a fear or not, I'm like, I don't want to look bad, so I, and because I put it out there. So one of the things is, you 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 have to tell people your goals. You have to. It's just, I, I've noticed the difference between the, the when I tell people and when I don't tell people. When I don't tell people, I don't really do the goals. I don't really wake up early or read that much or whatever. Say that was my goal is to read a book a week. If I don't actually say that on an Instagram post or I don't tell people that, or, if, or even better, if you say I'm going to not lose weight. Losing weight is an event, a lifestyle is really what it comes down to. It, it, your lifestyle is like, I'm gonna cut out sugar or processed food or only drink once a month. For me, I drink once a week. And that's coming from someone myself that used to, you, I played rugby, not used to, but um, I played rugby in college and I was in a fraternity and I'm Irish. So for me to say that, you say it and then you believe it. That's the biggest thing is you say it, you say it, you say it, you say it, you keep on saying it, you know, uh, what's his name? Muhammad Ali, and and more recently, uh, what's his name? The MMA fighter, um, really, like Conor McGregor. That he goes, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. Muhammad Ali used to say that before he even had a title. Mike Tyson used to say that before he even had a title. I'm the greatest. I'm the best. And I'm not saying to to boast like that, but there's times I walk around. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm the best, I'm the best. And you start believing it. Because if you don't believe it and you have inner conflicts, as Tony Robbins says, and I'll get into the goals on who, who, who you actually talk to about it. If you have inner conflicts, like I wanna lose weight, but I wanna not wake up early, or I want to make a ton of money, but I do not like rich people, that's an inner conflict. So in other words, 
you want to do something, but deep down inside, you have some angst about that thing or those people. You know, the 1%! Rrr, the 1%! I hate the 1%! And you want to make a lot of money? It's like, that's an inner conflict. That's impossible. You can't do that. Because you don't like those people, yet you want to become that person? Your ego will not allow you to do that. And your ego is not good. Always, always be mindful of your ego, and I'm going to do an ego course in the... Um, there's also two people, uh, just talking about the website real quick, is uh, two people, Nick Drosis, he's got 200 and something thousand followers, and uh, Ashley Zahabanan, or whatever, um, she's got like, I don't know, 12,000 or 15,000 followers, she's, uh, check them both out, I'm going to get them on the, the website as well, but going back to who you tell it to, and, and this came up this morning, in the gym, I am, or it came up twice, so... I'll, I'll talk about the first one, which was over the weekend, and my sister was talking about, uh, she's like, I think you've accomplished what you've wanted to accomplish. And I'm like, in, in my mind, and I didn't say it out loud, you know, because, and I'll talk about the reasons why, is that, I was like, but I'm 31, I almost said 30, I'm 31, like, what, do I just stop? You know, I'm reading amazing book. If you own a business, read the book, Made in America by Sam Walton, it's the guy that built Walmart. And regardless of what you say about Walmart, I, I, don't, I have no opinion. You know, they're like, they treat their customers terribly. Read the book. Maybe like since Sam Walton died. I, I think he died. I don't know if he's still alive. I haven't looked him up. But the book is amazing if you are a business owner or you want to be a business owner. Because he brings up culture, profit sharing, all these things that I'm going to implement um, transparency to customers and to employees and things like that. But Sam Walton tried to retire, and that's the chapter of mine, is he tried to retire, and he came back, and he literally, when he came back, and he said, hey, listen, I'm coming back, the CEO and chairman, he, he told that to, left the company and brought almost two-thirds of the management company, two-thirds of management with him, and Sam Walton came back on board, and he literally only had one-third of management. He said, the worst thing that can happen is always a blessing. And he tried to retire. And going back to what my sister said, she said, you you discovered, or she goes, uh, I think you've accomplished what you've wanted. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, no, I didn't. I haven't. I'm 31. Do I just stop? Like Sam Walton, he was 67 or something when he came back. Or, or no, 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 maybe not even that late. Maybe, maybe late. I would, I would say low 60s, high 50s when he came back, which is great. Because that means in 20 years, he... 20 like he came back and then took the company to the next level so i'm thinking number one is like was my goal did, did she does she think that my goal was to just start a company and just have it just survive no i want i want to make a dent and then today when i was in the uh when i was in the locker room after showering and everything else i was talking to a couple of guys and one of the guys that uh he's he's a huge runner he just loves running He's not like a big runner as in like weight, but he like loves the runner. So he loves to run and he knows I love to cycle. And I guess that's like a, a click. Uh, the runners and the, the cyclers. And the there's a guy there, he's he's a little overweight. And the the guy that runs is like I have no idea. He's he's he has a full head of hair, he's a super at a building in New York City. I don't know if you know what a super is, but they take care of buildings. They don't make that much money. This guy's at Equinox, which is like $200 a month or like $250 a month. And I'm literally looking around. I'm like, the guy's a super. He's got a full head of hair. He, I, I think he lives in the building. He doesn't make that much money. He runs like a bench. He's got a great attitude. That's a person who's just grateful. It's not about the money. And, and this is just a side tangent. People are like, I need a nice watch and a house and, 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 a, and a great husband or a great wife or beautiful children or tons of da-da-da. I need everything. This guy literally probably makes, I, I'm just going to say 60000 and he's got beautiful wife, you know, you know, like, a, in other words, a loving relationship with his wife. He He's... He looks great. He's in amazing shape. He was talking about going on an 18-mile run. He's like, I don't know, maybe 60. And 
the other guy was like, oh yeah, just like a warm up, you know, kind of like prodding him. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's great, Milton. I'm like, that's awesome. And it's funny that his name is Milton. I, I've never said anything, but it's so. Then Milton, and then I say, oh, you know, because I'm going to be doing some long endurance cycling, you know, some long races. And I, I go to Milton and I say, hey, listen, I'm like, oh, have you done any long runs? And the and he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ultra marathons are known as anything over 37 miles is known as an ultra marathon. And the guy that was there that was sort of involved in the conversation, you know, a little overweight, he goes, he says, he goes, um, something towards the fact of he goes yeah you could die doing that you could die doing that so watch who you it's not watch who you say your goal goals to because Milton has done over 37 miles in one run or one uh, at one time also known as a mo ultra marathon but it's I told my sister my goals way early on she said don't start the company don't do it it's stupid and then I that motivated me. I started the company, and then over the weekend, that was one, before I started the company, which was two and a half, two and a half years ago. And then my sister, uh, over the weekend, she goes, "I think you've accomplished your goals." And in my mind, I'm like, "Do I stop?" And then this morning, Milton is talking about how he's doing 18 miles at 60 years old. He's an amazing shape, full head of hair, black hair, not nothing gray. And it's one of those things. It's it's not who watch. It's not watch who you tell your goals to. It's when you tell your goals to someone, say like my family member, like I'm very close to my sister. And this guy who we all work out all, not together, but you know, we see each other every single day. And it's it's not watch who you tell your goals to, it's when you say your goals, number one is say the goals. Number two is when someone gives you the feedback of, yeah, you could die doing that. Or my sister, which is, uh, I think you've accomplished your goals already. Don't have more goals. She didn't say that, but that was kind of like the underlying theme of don't have more goals. And it's really, like I said in the beginning, you have to objectively look at the situation and be like, is this someone that has accomplished something that their opinion really means something? And and listen, there could be someone that make that's like, it could be Richard Bronson can say, you know, and he would never say this, but say they say something where you actually question it, uh, watch what they say. That's the biggest thing, is watch what they say. Because if they say it and there's no credibility behind it, then there's no point in, in continuing to talk to them about it because they're not going to add anything, especially when you're passionate about it, especially when you're passionate about the goal. So number one is always look at who's actually giving you the feedback. Uh, two is always say your goal. And number three is, um, more importantly, is don't mind what they say. And it's really hard, especially when you're pushing forward like myself and you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing. And no one, no one you, that's surrounded with you right now, like right now, like I don't have Gary Vaynerchuk or Simon Sinek or Brian Tracy or Tony Robbins in my social circle yet. But it's one of those things that you think about and you're like, what would they say? You know, in the, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, the, the, the author, oh, he talks about every week, have a board meeting with the most brilliant minds. And you have it in your mind. You say, this is what my goals are. What should I do? And you literally, I know people that have done this and had some amazing revelations where they, they have a board meeting of dead people <laughs> in their mind. And I haven't done it, but it's like, in my mind, it's like, what would Gary Vaynerchuk, what would, you know, Simon Sinek, because he was just on the show, or Brian Tracy, or, uh, you know, Quest, uh, Inside Quest, highly recommend that YouTube channel. So watch not who you say it to, but watch how you, re how you respond to what they say. That's the biggest thing, all right? So your homework is watch how you respond to their response, not what you say, all right? Have an awesome day, subscribe to the videos. Cheerio, peace out.